Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time of day this video finds you. It's your boy Jay here on the last day of the year, and I want to talk to you about the future of the Monster Hunter franchise. And there is something that I am seeing on the horizon that I'm really liking, okay? Now, I think Monster Hunter Wilds has the potential to be another uh, popularity jump for the franchise, similar to what Monster Hunter World did uh, back in 2018, right? So, uh, Monster Hunter World, one of Capcom's best-selling games of all time, right? Like, best-selling game in the Monster Hunter franchise, crazy accolades, everybody loves it. It's a great game, right? It's a great game to, to go back to and play, um, and, you know, that's actually what's happening right now. You know, Capcom has kind of done this marketing thing where it's like, hey, return to world, play through world again. You know, now that Rise and Sunbreak is over, let's go back to the game previous, you know, replay that while we wait for Wilds, right? Now, when Wilds was revealed, I was like, man, it's kind of early, you know, like they're telling us it's 2025, but we're in 2023 right now. Why are they telling us so early? I, I was like, this kind of early for it. But I think I think I see the vision. I'm starting to see the vision. They tell us that the game exists. They tell us that they're working on the game. There's no more mystery, right? It's far flung in the future, 2025. I think it's going to come out Q1 2025, right? Probably before March. Uh, because Monster Hunter 20th Anniversary is going to get started in March as well, I think. I think they're really going to ramp up um, you know, Monster Hunter's 20th Anniversary in March, right? So we got this Return to World thing going on, right? Peak player counts are going crazy. Um, you know, a lot of people are going back to play. A lot of new people are playing it, right? Uh, I was thinking about making this video before I knew, uh, you know, Asmund Gold was playing through the game, right? Uh, you look at the, the Twitch chart from earlier today. Uh, it was like 46,000 people are watching Monster Hunter World right now. I was like, yo, that is crazy. But what's even crazier is 40,000 of those people are in a single stream. That's Asmund Gold right there, man. That's crazy, right? You know? So, um, and I think, you know, it's, it's early. It's still early. It's not even 2024 yet officially, right? But that's tomorrow. See y'all next year, by the way. Um, so, you know, he plays the game. That, that might inspire a lot of new bloods to pick up the game and try playing the game. Especially since World, Iceborne, Rise, and Sunbreak are at their lowest prices they've ever been, man. Check them out on Steam. They're in like single digit territor territories for some of the games, man. You talking about nine dollars for potentially three, four, five hundred hours of content? Oh my god, that's incredible, right? And you have plenty of time to put that many hours in a Monster Hunter game before Wilds comes out, right? And Wilds was shown at the Game Awards, huge stage. Everybody saw Wilds. Everybody knows Wilds exists, right? Right? And then we've got the Monster Hunter 20th anniversary celebration coming through as well, right? I think all of this is going to coalesce and, and really get it going for the Monster Hunter franchise again, right? So I don't think Capcom is going to go, you know, light on the 20th anniversary. I think they go, they're really going to go out and go hard and try to capitalize on all these people playing the game now. Uh, and they're really going to make a lot of noise about Monster Hunter as a franchise period, right? They're not just going to talk about world. They're not just going to talk about wilds. They're going to talk about, um, you know, like merchandising. They're going to talk about, uh, you know, fun online events like voting for your favorite monster. Uh, and, you know, we're going to have content creators like yours truly hit the subscribe button, by the way, uh, talking about the games, talking about the events, right? We're going to be covering this stuff. And, you know, we're going to have big content creators potentially, much like Asmongold already, pick up the game, play through the game for the first time, bring in a lot of new people, bring in a lot of their communities to the game, right? And then what's going to happen is Wilds, when Wilds comes out, everyone's going to be like, yo, I just played through World. I had a blast. I'm going to pick up Wilds because I now know what Monster Hunter is, right? And then there's this other thing that I had in my head. Uh, one of the, the top videos on this channel, you know, when I was first making it was Monster Hunter demos are not that great. If you're brand new, right? If you're brand new to the franchise, never touched, never heard of Monster Hunter, and you know you load up a demo, that's not going to be the best experience for you. You're not going to get it, right? 
But if you've already played a Monster Hunter game, the demos are incredible because you already have a baseline understanding of what the game is about, right? You know what the whole loop is. You go out, you kill things, you take parts back from that thing, you create better armor, better weapons, you go out and you kill bigger things, right? You don't get that in the demo. All you get is easy, medium, hard, and like you either win or you don't win. And if you don't win, it can be quite unsatisfying because you don't you can't really change up your tactics that much, right? Yeah, like, yeah, you can change your weapon, but you don't really get to change the specifics of the weapon. And you don't get to change your armor uh set. You don't get to say, you know what? I do need more space when I evade. Let me slap on evade extender. Or you don't you don't get, oh, you know what? I need razor sharp so I don't have to spend as much time sharpening. You don't get that that cerebral part. You don't get that part of the game where you're stand or you're standing at the blacksmith thinking about what armor should I craft next to fight and help beat this monster that I'm stuck on. You don't get that part. You know what I'm saying? And then you finally overcome it after you've been changing your armor and your strategies up. And then you get that dopamine rush. You get that rush. You get that, oh hell yeah, I did that, right? You get that. You don't really get that in the demo. But because you've already played a game before, the demo is great. Why? Because you have muscle memory and you know what the games are about. Then you get to really feel all the changes that come with the new game, right? Then you get to, the, oh, okay, I see what they're doing with this, right? The demo will give you a lot of information if you have a lot of information. But if you're a brand new beginner, never touched the demo before, and then you play the demo and you're like, yo, this game is not it. I don't, I don't like it. Ah, you know, I get it. Hell, it happened to another Monster Hunter creator, uh, Hey J Hunts, right? Played the demo. He was like, I don't like this game. I'm not going to play it. A whole bunch of us came out the woodwork. It was like, hey, bro, hey, bro, look, listen, just hear us out. Try it. He really tried it. Now look at him now. He, he went back and played 3U. He played through 4U. He played through World. He played through Sunbreak. He loves the franchise now. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, those demos aren't good, but... Now, with this kind of in limbo year that we've got coming up, um, Capcom can use this year to keep the prices low on the games that exist for the current platforms and let people get that Monster Hunter experience for the super cheap. Then, when the demo comes out for Wilds and it's you know amazing and people love it and they really understand the game because there's more people who've played it, then when Wilds comes out, ooh, it's got a real possibility to actually top world to actually be bigger than what world was when it came out right like wilds could stand on the shoulders of world iceborne rise and sunbreak and jump into the stratosphere into new heights that sounds crazy and i think that's what's gonna happen here and i think that's the kind of year we're gonna have here uh preparing for the release of wilds in probably early 2025 so yeah, I'm saying all this because I, I don't know. I see it and I want to know if, you know, I'm on the mark. What do you guys think? Are you guys seeing the same things? Are you guys interpreting the same things I am? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, we're going to talk more Monster Hunter, you know, for the next year. I don't plan on like, oh, I ain't going to talk about Monster Hunter no more. What? <laughs> I'm staying on the Monster Hunter grind, people. All right. So, yes. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, yes, definitely hit the comments down below. Do you think Monster Hunter Wilds has the possibility to overtake Monster Hunter World as the most successful entry in the franchise? Like how I'm seeing it. Or do you think I'm off my rocker and I'm going crazy and nothing like that is going to happen? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll reply to each and every comment that hits this video. And as always, people, happy, happy hunting. Peace.